everybody, I am Shane. And I am Drew, and this is 40K. It's a, <laughs> it's a podcast where we're just going to kind of talk about everything Games Workshop, from the tabletops to the shows, books, video games, kind of all of it. And to start us off, we'll do introductions. Shane, you want to introduce yourself and how you got into Warhammer as a whole? Yeah, so I, I'm Shane. Uh, I'm 37 years old, and I live in a... No. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> to be honest, yes, I probably should be like in some sort of like plastic crack anonymous like thing for this. Um, but I've been into 40K for quite a while now. You you wrote me into this. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bastard. <laughs> uh, You're welcome. <laughs> uh, right around, I, I want to say it was a top of fourth edition mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you pulled me in. I think you brought up Warhammer to me. You had mentioned it, right? Yeah. What had happened was your, your cousin had actually mentioned it to me at one point, and I'd always been kind of interested in it. And I remember he, he was like, well, I got rid of all my stuff, but I think Drew still has his stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll reach out to him and ask him. And it's a very weird parallel if you're a fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's exactly how Dee and Dennis get stuck on crack. Because you just make a single phone call and then you're addicted. <laughs> it's the best way I could put this. Because <laughs> you were like, you still have your Warhammer stuff, right? And I was like, yeah, it's down in the basement. And you're like, I would really like to just try it out. Would you want to try it out again with me? And I was like, getting those kind of those flashbacks of like the painting, the models and all that. But I, I had secretly kind of been like, man, you know, I, I feel like I need to give it a, a second try. So I was like, yeah, all right. And I remember you came over, uh, I had just, we had just bought our house, me and my wife, and we barely had any furniture whatsoever in the home. And I remember us sitting in my living room on the floor. Yep. You had five Terminators, you had 10 normal Marines, and that was it. Did I have Tyranids too? I think I had a couple bugs. No, no, we didn't have any. We just had was strictly just marine? space marines. And literally you made it to where it was like, I took the five Terminators and you took the 10 Marines. And because the idea was the, the balance between them was even at that time. Yeah, it was like, it, we each had like a hundred points. Yeah, it was something very simplistic. Because I remember I threw everything in a shoebox. <laughs> And I just remember sitting on the floor. We didn't do no measurement. We were just like, okay, the weapons range is this much. So that's as far as we'll be apart from each other. And then we'll move into range of each other so we can learn each phase and how it works. And I just remember sitting there. And I think one of the first things I did was, I forget what weapon the Terminator had, but I fired it and blanked a guy. Like he just evaporated into nothingness. Like that was it. That was my imagination bringing up that whole, bam, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Before that, you had shot other guys. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to take my armor save. And saved out of it. And you fired that weapon. I think it was like a LAS cannon. You fired it at one of my Marines. And I just pulled him off the table and you were like, wait, doesn't he get a save? And I was like, no, <laughs> the weapon you fired at him is designed to blow tanks up. <laughs> yeah, so right. he's just gone. His buddies looked over. There was a bright flash. And when their vision cleared, there was just like a charred <laughs> silhouette of where he once stood. Some metal boots still there, but everything yeah. else is gone. And I would say <laughs> that moment right there was what cemented our love for the game. Yes. It's the hilarious moments that happen and how you and I always describe them. Like, nothing will make me laugh harder than some of the random shit that will happen in this game. I was at work the other day, and my friend Sam was asking me about the game, and she was like, what's so special about it to you? And I'm like, everything is... I go, I guess it depends on who you're playing with, but I primarily play with my friend Drew, and when we play, me and him both have this really overactive sense of imagination about what's going on we can actually put ourselves down on the field and watch as spectators but find it absolutely hilarious what's happening to these guys and i had to like walk her through like some different scenarios that we've gone through and the hilarity of it and knowing that this giant thing that's not meant to hit a guy hits a guy that's funny to me like yeah it's meant to take out buildings and tanks and yet this one poor schmuck just happen to be too close for their comfort. And they're like, well, we don't know if these guns will get him, but this gun, this gun will for sure take care of yeah. him. Fuck him over and just blow him out of the water. <laughs> 
it's like we had a match one time. My army I like to play is Dark Eldar. And at the time, you were playing an orc army. Yes. The Dark Eldar had a weapon where it's a grenade that creates a vortex to another dimension. <laughs> and in the rule book, it describes it as like unseen tendril-like arms reach the fabric of reality and they grasp at anything nearby and pull them away to their dark pocket <laughs> world to be devoured or whatever. So I threw that at Shane's orc leader, Gaz Kalthraka, who is this giant mountain of green that just murders everything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like opening up a portal and you're like, wait, what? And that alone is one of my favorite things about the game is that you might go up against an army you haven't really fought before. And then they open up a portal and you're like, oh, what the hell does that do? Like, you're not firing a gun at me? It's like, no, nah, this, this will be interesting. The worst part was he still got a save. He still got to roll. He got like all of his saves. And I failed all of them. <laughs> Instead of winning the lottery in my life, I ended up getting gas to get sucked into a portal. I spent it all on that one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and he's and he's gone, and then we just stopped there, and I was like, do you realize what just happened? And you're like, out of nowhere, he's charging into battle, and then a giant space octopus wrapped a tentacle around him and then pulled him through. And so now, forevermore, we always, whenever anybody brings up Gaz or we hear the name Gaz, <laughs> we always are just like... You know, he's out there somewhere <laughs> just fighting that octopus in space. Like, that son of a bitch didn't go down right, right then and there. He is fighting the octopus in space. And we'll reference that with people around us. You know, they'll be like, Gaz, yeah, you think he's beating that octopus still? Yeah, and then they'll just look at us like, the hell are you talking about? <laughs> um, and that's, to me, that's the beauty of the game. Uh, is just the complete randomness. Yeah, uh, I think, um, like... Man, I just, without going too deep, trust me, when, when I say we've got stories to tell from this game, and that will be some of these episodes later down the road, but there are stories to fucking tell about just the insanity that this game can bring and the chaotic nature of it. Like, we still play some rules from older editions. We just poured them over to the new edition because we loved them because they were random rules. They were things that happened randomly like scenery rules and stuff like that. yeah scenery rules that you don't you don't know what it is until you step on it yeah and then you got to roll a die and it's completely random might be good might be bad might be nothing i love that that to me screams more forty thousand years in the future than anything you're not going to just drop onto a mysterious alien world and not run into some fucking problem. Yeah, we're space marines, we're in power armor, we're invulnerable, we are, we have the emperor to protect. You know what the emperor doesn't protect from? Fucking forests that can grab onto your brainstem and make you do bad <laughs> things to your friends. Like, that's, emperor don't protect from that. <laughs> That kind of stuff to me was always so much fun. And they took that stuff out of later editions, but I mean, it's not like we can't still use them. And I think that's another thing. As I talk to people about the game, there's an air of customization to how you play the game. You know, they've got there in their books and there are books. There's army books, there's rule books. It's a lot, all right? We'll get to that in a second. But in these books, they, they have separate, hey, this is for match play. This is what you're going to play if you're competitive. This is... Your narrative play. This is if you want to do like a, a narrative campaign that has your own created rich story to it. And then they have open play. But the beauty is within the narrative play and the open play is you can kind of still just add in your own flavor. A lot of places you can go to have house rules. There's certain things that can and can't be done. And I think that's always another really nice thing about the game. That level of just a little bit of you can add your own flavor to the game as you see fit. When me and Drew play, you're goddamn skippy. We're going to play play with those mysterious terrain rules because they're funny not everybody's into them so okay then we just don't play with them with those people but not a big deal yeah i feel like games workshop is as a whole right now they they cater to the competitive scene which makes sense from a business standpoint i mean i, I right. feel like your tournaments and things like that that's that's where you're going to make a lot of your money you and i you know like to play a little bit more of the randomness we don't build hyper competitive armies we build armies that make us happy who doesn't love uh, an army which is a one shot army like you're going to like one of my favorite things to play with my gray knights is I'm going to play super hyper aggressive and it's either going to play out for me or it's going to go bad. You know, it's like uh, my fifth edition Dark Eldar army that was just nothing but grotesques on boats. <laughs> Operation Big Guy Smash was, uh, I would like to think it was a success. This is another question somebody asked me. Well, how do you know what army to play? I'm like, really? It's an aesthetics thing at first. Yes. You're going to look at the army and you're going to go, that looks awesome. You're going to buy all that shit. And then you're going to get their rules. And then you're going to get the rules of the game. And then you're going to go, oh, man, they suck. <laughs> Between the two of us, I think we've played every army in the game. We've been oh, in it forever. I've played 
Space Marines, Tau, Dark Eldar, which I still play to this day. I have a Necron army, Death Guard, Plain Chaos army, and going to be getting Tyranids, that parasite. The idea of just making people explode into piles of worms is is, is too enticing. I can't not get that. <laughs> <laughs> what what all armies have you played? Fucking too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I am a Grey Knight player. That is my main. I That was literally the first army I saw that I looked at. And I was like, these guys look amazing. I like their aesthetic. I like the knightly thing. I've always been a big fan of that. Really attracted me to them. Uh, I would guess I would say my secondary would probably be Imperial Guard. Because who doesn't love cannon fodder? So it's like a perfect blend of like highly elite guys and guys who just get put into a blender and then <laughs> sent away. Besides my Grey Knights and my Imperial Guard, I have played Blood Angels. I have played Black Templar. I have played Orcs. I have played Tau. I forgot you you were into Tau for a while. I was into Tau for a little minute there. I had a pretty sizable Tau force before I dropped it. Both of us went through that little Tau phase. <laughs> you, you gotta give them a chance. You just, you just, they're plucky, you know? They got a little, little grit to them. <laughs> until until anybody gets within melee range with them, then the grid is gone. <laughs> I've jumped around to armies, but I've always come back to Grey Knights every time they get an additional update, just because I love them. The aesthetic to them, that knightly look that they have. They're space marines, don't get me wrong, but they look very different from normal space marines. Their whole backstory is awesome. I love my Grey Knights. Not only are you attracted to them, you like their personality. Dude, I love the fact that, canically, the way the Grey Knights are, they're not meant to be known. So one of the big things that they do in a lot of the stories is, if the Grey Knights show up, they're not just purging the bad guys that are chaos. If there's good guys present, sorry, you gotta go too. We can't risk you getting corrupted. So they just wipe everybody out and then they blast off back to their planet like, all right, we did our job. We're out of here. And they just immediately get on the walkie-talkie like, all of the demons are dead. Human survivors? No, I'm sorry. Uh, we were too late for them. <laughs> and then they're like, I'm sorry, what? No, I'm right here. No, my name's Steve Johnson. Yeah, no, I live in that house over there. No, I'm alive. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> all of a sudden you just hear a bolter fire. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Warhammer TV. I'll make sure that everybody knows. Like, we're not, we're not sponsored by Games Workshop. We're not getting any money by them or anything like that. They're so. gonna, they're probably gonna hate us sometimes in some of these later episodes, I'm sure. We, we will get a cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're good at yeah, those. So. GW is really good at those. They get those out on time, no problem. No delays there. <laughs> the thing that sold me right off the bat was you get a free model if you do a year subscription. And the one model was a, was an orc like war boss and i don't play orcs have no intentions of ever playing orcs i was like yeah no nope. but it's unique it's unique it's it's probably not going to be released for mainstream buying and then the other model that, that got me though it was either the orc war boss or it was a vindicare assassin and he's perched on this it's a bust of like a adeptus sarita like warrior like a sister of battle <laughs> it's it's a busty bust <laughs> A busty bust. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Buster. <laughs> you got me thinking of Buster Rhymes now. I was just going to um, say. Yeah, gonna busty bust. That, you're going to call that Vindicare Assassin Buster Rhymes? <laughs> um, so I was like, you know what? I like that model. I would love to use a Vindicare Assassin as, as like an attachment with my, my Space Marine army. You know what's great about those Vindicare Assassins? They can kill a brass scorpion in one shot. <laughs> they used to be able to one shot anything. So I was like, you know what? Like, screw it. For I, I would end up paying like 30 bucks for that model anyways. Probably, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I actually bought one. It was like 20, the, the, the older style model of the Vindicare. And it was like 23 or 24 bucks. Immediately looking at it, I was like, well, I'm going to build him just on a base. And then I'm going to take that perch that he's on, that piece of scenery. And I'm going to build that into a terrain, terrain piece. Like, that'll be an objective marker for me. Is, is how I looked at it. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to get a model and a piece of terrain. So that's what I'm paying for. And if I get any enjoyment out of the out of the subscription, at this point, that's just a boon. Like, why not? And it, it's not bad. I, I will say Warhammer TV. I, so that's that's mainly what I use. You get you get access to the TV shows. The Army Builder is included in your subscription, which is nice. I wouldn't use the Army Builder unless it was, I guess we'll call it free because I'm, I'm not paying separately for it. And then you get access to the Warhammer Vault. But the shows, there's a couple of them. Um, there's Angels of Death, which follows a Blood Angels company. I won't spoil anything, but um, that show was pretty good. 
there's 10 episodes. I think each episode was like 20 minutes long. That's, I mean, that's not bad. That's no, I mean, that felt like a, like a full on show. The art style was very cool. It's just like monochromatic. Everything is black and white except for the color red. So that it, like the art style was pretty striking and that was a fun show to watch. Um, Guy, guys, he's, he's a graphic designer. So he's like got a raging heart on for like that kind of <laughs> It was, just, it, it was neat like the idea <laughs> of the blood angels and I, one thing about that show that i actually all of these shows that i will say is if you really are a nerd about the lore if you know a lot about blood angels lore there are things that happen in that show based on their lore that they don't like stop and explain they don't sit there and say there's no like exposition about things where they say, Oh, I remember our chapter master back in the Horus heresy when he blah, blah, blah. They don't do that. There are things that happen and you're like, Oh shit, that's this. And that's this. And that's, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's just, no, they're, they're, so you're saying there's not a lot of exposition of explaining. They're like, no, you're fans of this. You know what the hell is going yes. on. You're literally paying a subscription for Warhammer TV. So we're going to assume that you're a fan. Like, they, they treat it that way. My favorite show is Hammer and Bolter. Every episode is its own contained story. Okay, so it's like uh, like an anthology series. Yes. I love that show. I To me, you have two ways you could do a Warhammer show. You can pick one section of the lore, which is massive. I mean, like I said, yeah, there's like over, there's over 10 armies. So right off the bat there, you know... Do you pick two armies and you do a battle between them? Do you pick one army and follow a, a day in the life? Hammer and Bolter is just like, hey, episode one is about Inquisitors. Episode two is about Orcs. Episode three follows like a Skitari or a, a tech priest or whatever trying like on a, on a planet that's being overrun by Orcs. And it's like every episode is a grab bag. You never know what you're going to get. And it's an awesome way to get somebody excited about different aspects of the lore that they may not know or have realized that they would like they have a show about painting uh it's called master class <laughs> uh, i just i just want it to be a bob ross style thing <laughs> give, them a happy, yeah. give them a happy little happy little base with a happy little brush <laughs> happy, little, happy little bush in the corner next to him down by his feet see those little blood stains right there you just kind of there are no mistakes here. You just kind of hit your brush against the model and wherever them blood splatters the flow, that's just the way that they're supposed to be. You want to really make them look messy, you just beat the devil out of them and just <laughs> smack that brush back and the devil out of it. <laughs> <laughs> War Masters is a, is a fantastic show. It, it's basically the Warhammer Wikipedia pages uh, boiled into kind of a, um, I don't want to say like a documentary, but they're, they're, the host's name is Wade and he just kind of, you know, Today we're going to talk about Mortarion. So for me, yeah, for right now it's worth it. Um, I've, I've been pretty happy. Like everybody that I, I see online that has Warhammer TV says the same thing. I like the content. I just wish there was more. Before we, we close this out, I wanted to kind of briefly let people know, like, what the hell are we doing? Like we're, we're kind of throwing caution to the wind here and uh, playing it by, you know, right our own. I don't know what's a... Uh, there's a phrase in there somewhere, but essentially what I'm getting at is <laughs> what we plan on making this podcast into. My hopes are is we can make it a more f a fun community of players who are into the game. Um, we're not going to take deep dives into the lore, okay? We'll definitely talk about the lore. We're going to definitely kind of put our own twists on the lore. Again, me me and Drew have this tendency where we, we love to visualize everything in a more funny aspect, not take it so seriously. If you play it a lot, if you are very well-versed in, in 40K and Warhammer as a whole, then we'd love to have you. And if you are new, then hopefully, you know, you will also find enjoyment in the show. Yeah, find find some enjoyment in what we're doing and learning about the game. And learning about the community. I mean, I think I think we do a pretty good representation of what of the majority of the players are like. Most 40K players that I've come across are not dicks. They're pretty laid back. Yeah. And one thing I will say real quick about the 40K community, something that I, I, I still see to this day is I remember going into my local game store and just being completely lost and asking the, the owner, I see the Warhammer models over there. What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't even know where to begin. 
And not only did he step in, but people that were there playing and building models were like, oh, you're interested. Like you didn't even notice those people in the store. They come out of the woodwork. They're like, oh, exactly. In the court of K, that's awesome. Like I sit under the table for just such an occasion. Yeah. <laughs> In the, like, in the game store we go like, to, yes, that's not actually yeah. out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what army you want to play? Like, do you, and I was like, I don't, army? Like, I don't know. They, they walked me through, like, every step of the way. They helped me from beginning to end. And I would challenge anybody that's listening that's interested in the game, that if you go to a, a game store near you that sells it, and you ask them, you know, like, hey, I'd like to start, and I need help. I, I don't even know where to begin. You will not only have probably the owners, but if there are there are people there playing, they will also They'll play. jump in whether you want them to or not. <laughs> yes. The level of excitement. It's like if you get into 40K, you are into it. Yeah. It's a community. I don't know anybody that's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's like, oh my God, like, tell me more. This is awesome. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thinking, of, uh, thinking of questions, um, we have a email address that you guys can pop by, throw us a question, throw us a comment, throw it, uh, throw criticism. Uh, we'll probably ignore those, but it's okay. We're, we're, we're hoping it's all <laughs> love. It is ask40k, that is Q U E. Not not the letter K, but like the inquisitive Spanish uh, K at gmail.com. So that is ASK40QUE at gmail.com. Send us a message. Yeah, if there's anything you want us to talk about. Yeah. Um, if there's a topic you want to hear about, let us know. We'll, we'll gladly jump into it. You can, you can even ask us, what's your humorous take on this character? And believe you and me. We, we've got it. We'll get that covered. But if you want some good humor and some good laughs, that's that's what we're here to do. We're here to dissect things. If you had anything anything wacky happen in a battle, let us know. <laughs> yeah, if you had something wacky happen in a battle, I, we'd love to hear about that. That's like our bread and butter. We want to know what insane thing that nobody thought would happen happens. Um, and before we go, uh, Drew, uh, the world in uh, 40K is a dark and depressing and dreary place not unlike our own right at the current time frames um but in 40k you've got an invulnerable save and i'm gonna ask you a question uh what's your invulnerable save for today like what is protecting you from the dreariness of the world that we're currently living in I decided that my first podcast recording snack would be a thing of yogurt, and that was a terrible idea. <laughs> so I guess I take comfort in the knowledge that I'll never eat a dairy product while trying to talk for <laughs> an hour straight again. That's been horrible, trying to hide my gross pack-a-day yogurt hacks over here. <laughs> Shane, what makes you happy at the moment? Well, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make it a twofer here. And I'm going to say our intro music that a good buddy of mine and his band Astral Born put together for us over a long time ago because we're bad people and we haven't been uh, active like we should be. But that intro that they wrote for us, that's specifically for us, I love it. When you open it up with that music, <laughs> God damn it, I get ready to go. I am ready to talk. I'm ready to talk 40K. Yeah. That's professionally done. It's the most professional yes. thing that is going to ever come out of this podcast. Yes, I was just going to say that. There's nothing that's going to ever come that close. And that is so goddamn cherry. I love it. <laughs> They're astral born. You can find them on Spotify. You can find them pretty much anywhere. So a special thanks to those guys. Uh, that is uh, Paul, Jason, and Derek. Those are the main members. There might be some guys that come in and do gig work for them. But those are the three dudes that do it. I've known Jason since... God, freshman year of high school, so well over 20 years. Uh, they're awesome. I love their music. If you need music that's going to wake you up and get you ready to go, go with them. They're astral born. You can't go wrong. So with that, I think that's it. I th We're a little over our normal time that we want to do, uh, but that's the intro episode, so we'll, we'll forgive it. I want the emperor to protect you. I want the emperor to protect you for this day. So go forth, game on, <laughs> my people. Drew, do you have any parting words for the, the, the listener? I say listener because I bet you there ain't going to be more than one right now. 
there's gonna be people that are gonna listen to later episodes and go let's see what the fucking first episode is about and they're gonna be like oh thank god i listened later on this is terrible <laughs> Well, I guess I will leave everybody with my final thought of the day. All right, Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your parting thought. So orcs are plants, right? Essentially. So if you were to throw one, are you tossing a salad? <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to our first episode. I am Drew. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm Shane. <laughs> and this has been the first episode of hopefully many of the 40K podcast. Thank you.